Hello, I'm John Gearing. I'm an instructor pilot at the Aviation Training Center in Mobile, Alabama in the H-60 Division. What you're about to see is a series of four videos for the Coast Guard's how-to channel. Each video is going to talk about a certain tail rotor emergency. There are four categories that we'll be discussing over the four video series. Loss of tail rotor effectiveness, loss of tail rotor drive or thrust, loss of tail rotor authority, and loss of tail rotor control. The first emergency category where you can break down tail rotor emergencies is loss of tail rotor effectiveness, where wind is the primary factor that's going to cause the motion of the helicopter. A couple of assumptions, uh, the relative aerodynamic effects that the wind is going to have on the helicopter, we are assuming the pilot is not making the appropriate control input to correct for the rotation of the aircraft. Uh, the second assumption we're going to cover today is that uh, everything we're about to say is applicable to main rotor systems that have a counterclockwise rotation of the rotor disc. So if here's our helicopter, the disc will rotate like this if viewed from the top. Now, it should go without saying that all helicopters that do that are better than helicopters that spin like this, but it's an important assumption to clarify. That being said, we'll start when wind is coming from the three o'clock position of the helicopter. When wind is entering the rotor system at that aspect, approximately 090 plus or minus 30 degrees, because of the tail rotor design of the H-60 helicopter has a thrust direction that is to the starboard or to the right, when the wind comes from the direction and hits the tail rotor in that way, it reduces the angle of attack of the tail rotor blades. The result is that the nose will go right, absent action from the pilot. When the wind is coming from the six o'clock position of the helicopter, approximately 180 plus or minus 60 degrees, it's a phenomenon known as, known as weathercock stability, also commonly referred to as the barn door effect, and can push the nose of the aircraft either right or left, or the tail of the aircraft right or left, I should say. The next category is when wind is coming from the nine o'clock position of the helicopter, approximately 270 plus or minus 60 degrees. As we discussed earlier, if the thrust, thrust vector of the tail rotor is to the starboard, that means the downwash or the induced flow is to the port side or left side of the aircraft. When wind enters the tail rotor from the nine o'clock position, it pushes those vortices back up into the tail rotor. You're no longer getting clean air and therefore you're entering a state of what's called tail rotor vortex ring state. Finally, the last category is when wind is coming into the rotor system from the 300 plus or minus 15 degrees. As we discussed, when the rotors are turning, as the rotor passes that uh, point in space and the wind catches the rotor, the vortices of that rotor get pushed over the tail rotor and again will induce a right rotation absent any inputs from the pilot. 